Okay, hi, I am Brian Cardell. I'm a developer advocate at Agalia. And I'm Eric Meyer, also a developer advocate at Agalia. And uh, on today's Agalia Chats, we're going to kick it off with asking you, Eric, if you noticed this trend. I've noticed it in blog posts and in the social media and on podcasts. That's like, boy, we have suddenly got so much stuff. Like, we, like, what's the next thing going to be? Like, we don't even have, like, we've had this long list and it feels like we've sort of landed all of them. Have you, have you seen like a similar, like, boy, what, what's next? What should we even ask for? Um, yeah, to some extent, because when you think about it, um, <laughs> in the last, eh, well, okay, it's 2023. So the last six years or so, pretty much since CSS grid in 2017, uh, which was roughly coincident with Flexbox settling into something stable. You know, we've got so many things that have shown up, like just recently container queries and the has selector, which lets you do parent and ancestor and other crazy uh, selection patterns. Um, but, you know, we also see um, uh, cascade layers, and cascade scoping and anchor positioning are all uh, emerging. Um, and then outside of CSS, there's been like the dialogue element and, and JavaScript modules and classes in JavaScript and the popover API and just so much stuff that it almost kind of does feel like, wow, <laughs> that's, that's everything we ever asked for. But it actually isn't everything we ever asked for, is it? No, it's not. And um <laughs> What what I think is interesting is that a lot of these asks are, are pretty old. And so I got to thinking, um, like, what if we could sort of like hop in the Wayback Machine, like go back in time to, say, a specific day in 2004 and see, like, what like what did we think that we needed and, and what did what did we get from way back then? A specific day, you say? Yeah, well, I don't know what specific day necessarily, but like late in 2004, let's say. I think 2004 is the right time to look, though. Okay, why is that? Because 2004 is kind of like a watershed year. Mm. Recall that W3C like declared HTML dead in like 1998 in favor of yeah. new technologies. I do uh, recall that. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, it was really kind of a bent toward, um, there's a lot of support for a, effectively like Java plus markup, not necessarily specifically Java, but like the, the same basic model uh, as Java. Hmm. And all this kind of came to a head with this workshop that was called in San Jose in June 2004 called the W3C Workshop on Web Applications and Compound Documents. And it was sort of like about what to do with all of this. And there were 40 position papers, and this is sort of where the what wig was born, like because there was disagreement here. Yeah. And this is where we get like the split and the creation of what will become was not then at the time called HTML5. It was actually several specifications, not just one. But yeah, I think that's really the future of the web sort of definitely pivots on there, right? It's, it's sort of like the under the sea dance at. <laughs> <laughs> A little back to the future reference. Very nice. Yeah, back to the future. Um, yeah, I mean, you can, there are certainly a lot of things that, that changed at that at that juncture and like you said the what wig spun out of that and eventually html5 but um there were those there were those early specifications like web applications and web controls and web forms that all gradually coalesced into html5 yeah for, to at least some degree yeah um, so if you're interested in this history, I just want to mention that um, I uh, I gave a talk uh, in 2019 
that goes into all this stuff and um, sort of like the whole arc of the web platform. And I think it is a really interesting and good talk. I spent an incredible amount of time <laughs> making the slides and yeah. then it uh, promptly failed to record at the conference. So I oh. only did it once. Okay. Uh, so I have posted it to YouTube though, and you can, you can go and watch it there. We'll include a link to it. Um, yeah, let's talk about those, those, uh, those three specifications. These are the, the three things that were in the, what we G work. Um, so the first is web controls and despite that name sounding the most interesting of all of them is like the least interesting of all of them. <laughs> Well, why do you say that? Really, the only interesting thing in here is that it had a way to do pop-ups, which we're only getting today. So I do think that is interesting, but... Yeah, I mean, it sounds like... I mean, I know there was a separate web forms specification right around that same time. The web forms uh, one is where we get... What do you think we get from there? Well, probably form-related stuff, but... I'm going to guess that it wasn't, you know, combo boxes since those still aren't native. Yeah, we this is where we got all the form validation stuff that oh, okay. you know, like that uh which is interesting like I think that is really like underused. I think it's still a little bit clunky how to use some of it. But we also got like some of the most of the new input types are in there and like new input types like New input types like uh, date picker. I believe date picker is in there. Uh, okay. um, I am not positive, but uh, n numeric range is definitely in there. Uh, okay. So sliders but, by yeah. another, another name perhaps or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't have to be a slider, but it, it could be. Um, yeah. There are also some classes in there like related to that, like valid, you know. Oh, uh, like pseudo -class. CSS classes. Yeah, pseudo classes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so valid, invalid, that sort of stuff. Yeah. It, interestingly, I think that almost all of that is a mistake the way we did it. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, have you ever seen uh, Monica's talk called Input, I Love You, But You're Bringing Me Down? <laughs> I don't think I have seen that one. Y you have to go watch that. Yeah. Like, Seriously, Absolutely. as soon as we're done recording this, you should stop what you're doing and go watch I'm, it. It's I'm going to open a, a tab talk. right now so that it's ready. Yeah. Um, it's such a good talk, but it it gets into like the like the things that are clearly wrong with doing it this way, but only some of them. And like it's not a super surprise because it uses sort of like classical inheritance hmm. Hmm. and like that's not always the greatest uh solution right so like almost nothing fits neatly into a linnaean taxonomy like that you know <laughs> okay so this is the liskov substitution principle or lsp 2008 she won the turing award for her work like we think about that as if that is progressive enhancement. Like that's why we did that. We said, okay, well it's an input first. And that is like a thing that lets you put in text, which is the thing that's submitted over the wire. We know how to serialize it, right? Like it already participates in form. Like okay. all that stuff is the same. And we just add this type. And then if your browser supports that type, you get a little bit nicer input, right? And we have other patterns for that in programming, like with composition over inheritance. Anyway, I mean, I think we've we've kind of known this for yeah. a long time. Uh, I just think we chose the wrong thing there. There are like lots of other things in there. There was a data attribute, but it wasn't the data attribute. <laughs> and oh. we, we never got it as far as I could. Okay, tell. so there it was like just a bare attribute that was like data equals blah, not data dash whatever you want. So it was for, I, I would note too that I don't think that we ever did get something like this, but basically you could attach it to a form and say, here's the URL for the data that is in this form. So like if you were building things like, um, you know, there's lots of like sort of CRUD form applications, right? Uh, okay. Like, and 
lots of them have a, you know, you have to update, you have to pull up a record and then you might want to update it. Or even if it's read only, you just have the same form and you just want to load lots of data for it. Right. And this would have given you a way to do that. Like you provide a form without any data in it and then you give it a URL and it could populate the data, you know? Hmm. It's just sort of like a way of turning forms into spreadsheets in a sense. Um, I uh, I mean, maybe it could be used that way, but I, I think it's just more like the old, you know, basically like the old mainframe idea is, you know, what we do even still today. It's just like, here's a form that has a bunch of holes in it. Now you just load some data from the server and put it in those holes. Mm. And then you edit it and you click submit and it just submits the data back for those holes. Right. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So that, I mean, that was sort of like template and binding, right? Like you have this template and okay. then there's binding that gets bound into there. And there actually was things like repeaters and templates. It was honestly a little bit confusing, but there were things in there to like, sort of like template and stamp out HTML and repeat that we, we still don't have. Like we have gotten pieces like the template element that we have today okay, kind of originates a little bit there, hmm. but it was like a huge, I think that is an underappreciated element. That was a huge complex task. There's so much to it. Yeah. So we didn't get what we had there, but we did get that. But yeah, those are like the main interesting things in the web forms. I don't, I don't think like it's anything super un, unexpected hmm. really besides those hmm. like, um, I think all the really interesting stuff is in web applications 1.0. Oh, okay. I think that is the show. Like that is really the whole show is web applications 1.0. There is so much stuff in there. This is where we got like canvas. I, I thought that was a thing. Apple just sort of made up out of whole cloth. Was it? They did, but they put it into this web applications 1.0. Oh yeah. So this is uh, also there was, it contained a solution for tabs. Tab box was the element. Hmm. and um we don't have that yet no yeah we did work on this idea called panel sets but early on we didn't know what to call them so we called them spicy sections and that oh when you say we you mean the open ui group open ui yeah okay we're actually basically taken almost directly from here like that wasn't the plan from the beginning but we came up with this proposal and then we found this tab box proposal that Hixie had in web applications 1.0 in 2004. And we were like, wow, we came up with the same solution <laughs> that that's probably pretty good. Yeah. Um, but we didn't do that. that so that is, that is a pretty good signal. Usually. Yeah. There are tricky reasons why it's not that way in both cases. Um, but we won't get into that. That's another show. Sure. Um, there was also this more general version of the, like showy Heidi, a bunch of sections thing. The the sort of accordion pattern kind of deal. No, actually, this was more like like hypercard uh, or a carousel or something, where you, like you have like a whole stack of sections, but they're just like mutually exclusively shown. That still sounds like an accordion. How is it different? Uh, well, with an accordion, you see something about all the sections where like with hypercard, they're like literally stacked. Oh, uh, okay. So that's the, okay. So there's a difference. Yeah. In an accordion, you can see like all the little tabs, but in this mutually exclusive sections are like completely mutually exclusive. You can't even see the like titles of the other things. Was that? Yeah. Okay. Got it. I, I mean, the element was called switch. Uh, oh, wait. So yeah, when you say switch, I think of a like a light toggle switch. It's yeah, more like switch in programming. You know, the... it, it is more like switch in programming, yeah. but uh, I think okay. not exactly like switch in programming either. There's no break. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, I don't know. No. Whether, whether it's like hypercard or it's like an accordion or it's like neither. <laughs> it's still, there was... I, it does feel like there's probably a difference between that and tab box because if you, if switch add acted like a bunch of accordioning tabs, then why would you need tab box or vice versa? Right. There's got to be some yeah. difference there. Yeah. 
But anyway. Um, then there was uh, a data grid and data trees, which is again, like this idea of like, basically like live binding some data model to Dom. So th oh, this okay. one is like, like the data attribute you were talking about with web forms. It's the yeah. point off at some data source that will get sucked into the, into the web page, into the Dom. And this, I think, is more like spreadsheet-y, right? Like, okay. Because you're talking about like tables and tree tables. And it's like, yeah, there's like lots of matrices that people load numbers and data for. And it's nice that they live on a server and we just like load them up. Mm. Them having some like actual, like a way to define the data model. Mm. Also open the door to do other interesting things. Like this included the grid being able to like be sortable like provided by the browser oh so like you could sort columns and rows of your yeah you could sort data. and filter and all that kind of stuff but, like but, maybe natively from the browser itself oh, wow. yeah that would have been pretty cool i've yeah. i'm i'm sure you also have <laughs> implemented multiple times sorting of grids or columns or uh, uh yeah columns or rows or both because i know i've done it more than once yeah and yeah, and, and there's so many, you know, GitHub repositories and Stack Exchange questions about exactly that sort of thing. Yeah. I just note that like the last several that we talked about are all currently developing an open UI. Right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we there are things that are in that group of really old problems that we, we still haven't gotten and we're we're still actively working on. So Hopefully in the what's next, these are among the answers. Yeah. Would you say we're still working on them because they, they're just fiendishly hard or because? Um, I, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, just funding priority and attention. Um, mm -hmm. I think that we didn't pay attention to, we have paid almost exclusive attention to form participating interactive elements. So we don't have very many interactive elements in the web platform, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, yeah, like fully user interactive. Yeah. We don't we just don't have that we many. We don't have and that many almost... natively interactive. Yeah. They're they're basically all in forms, uh, in one way or the other. Yeah. So the ones that aren't are um details and just as of very, very recently, dialogue. Right. And that's that end of list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to make anything else interactable, so many event listeners. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we haven't, we haven't done that. We haven't focused on it because yeah, it is, they are kind of fiendishly hard. Um, I made a case a couple of years ago that I think it's time to pay attention to those ones, specifically the ones that aren't form participating. Um, because like, in a way, they're harder problems, uh -huh. but they're also maybe easier than the form participating ones <laughs> because they have like a whole less dimension to them. And more or less, there is like, we should have this parity with ARIA, ARIA patterns. And a lot of these are like, you know, well-documented ARIA patterns that in theory have like a right way. Um <laughs> I, I I thought that for sure. I'm not entirely sure that that was completely true. So again, I, I think this is a, a topic for another show, but just very briefly, I will say that the tab box that's in this specification for 2004 and our spicy sections slash panel set solution that we came up with an open UI, um, those were about sections of a document which you could display in tabs. Right. Um, so otherwise they would just be part of the same document. There's a strong argument that many tabs are not like that. And it, it's a definite in many cases, like your browser tabs are, are not that right. Like there is no use case for, well, just show me all of the browser tabs in one continuous scroll. Right. Mm, okay. Um, those are, that's actually a window manager, not just sections in the same document, you know? Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated, and there's a question about whether those are actually two different things that demand different accessibility characteristics. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there are, you're, you're right. They are very, very hard. Um, but hopefully worth it. Yeah. Anything else interesting in web applications 1.0? Uh, there was a calendar that's you mean, uh, kind of interesting. You mean like a calendar widget? Yep. Hmm. Used for displaying calendars and then also would have some, you know, interactive controls for a calendar, maybe. Um, hmm. But also would have the semantics of calendars, which is nice. Yeah. Um, but also in semantics, there was a card. Card. I know. That's one of those, like, could mean so many things. Right. But... Uh, <laughs> It is a f effectively like a V card or an H card kind of like. Oh, okay. Yeah. H card microformats. Yeah. It's basically just formalizing those hmm. practically into HTML itself. So sort of a business card structure kind of. Yeah. The, the sort of thing you would put in a, maybe a resume or I guess a, on a contact me page or that sort of thing. Right. Okay. A business card. Do people still use business cards? I feel like that's yeah, becoming an increasingly dated reference. Yes, but... I mean, I have them, but yeah. I can't remember the last time I got one. There was also like lots of like server sent DOM events. I think it was very, very cool. Like a stream of events that you send from the server that you could just listen for. So like you could um, like have an element in the page the example that they use is uh, stocks. So you, you could put a, one of these new elements in the page called event source. Uh, they used a dash, which is interesting because yeah. later we reserved that for custom elements. Right. But it was event dash source, SRC equals some URL. And then you give that an ID. And then you could listen for events on that uh, element and what it did is gave you like a way to stream events from the server to like send things in a very simple format that would translate to events. So hmm. um, you could listen for stock change events or whatever stock split events or, you know, whatever things were in there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, those. it kind of goes along. It goes with the data grid and the data trees and the data attribute. And mm -hmm. it sounds like there was a lot of thought early on there to turning browsers into thin clients in a sense. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot because of like that thing I said at the very beginning, which is like why this was born in the first place, mm -hmm. you know, like it was because there was this tension that HTML was dead, but like nobody told HTML, <laughs> yeah. you know, and uh, web web developers who had this superpower called JavaScript kept doing more and more and more with it, you know, and right. like pushing it into more and more application uses, you know, yeah, which I think is interesting all on its own because like there are clearly bad things about that, you know, like, um, but also I think there are clearly good things about it. And this, this was trying to say like, well, how do we make that better? Because I mean, we can plan whatever future we want also, but meanwhile, we should not probably just continue to insist that this one doesn't exist. We should like make this one better for, at least some of these use cases. You know? mm -hmm. There was also a connection object, which would expose an API um, that will allow you to create a local broadcast connection or a local peer connection via like Bluetooth or UDP or whatever. Mm. Um, it's kind of interesting. Okay. Um, both both of those two things, we didn't get them, but we have gotten and there are things in development for both of those. So like okay. we didn't get this particular server sent messages thing on an element, uh, but we, we did actually get the API itself. Um, I wasn't even aware of this, uh, but apparently there is an event source 
API. It's just not on an element. We did get lots of ways to communicate from the server. Like um, we got like um, web sockets and um, push notifications. And um, what's the, <laughs> it's. Are you, are you thinking of WebRTC? That, yes, that's, thank you. Sure. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, so we got lots of ways to do that. And then um, all of the Fugu stuff is trying to do like things like these like local peer connections and stuff like that to like give you like web Bluetooth and all that. So I don't know. We haven't gotten those. Maybe we'll get those, but uh, it's interesting. Of course, also the spec had all those new semantic things that HTML is really known for article main aside and so on. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and there was a document focus interface, which I think is really interesting because I know a lot of people have asked for that over the years. Maybe I think I have as well. And then you get into it and you're like, Hmm, I'm not sure that I really have thought this through as much. Like it seems very intuitive at the service, but I'm not sure. Um, and what does, I mean, what does that do? The API just has move, focus, and then a, a direction. So that can be like forward, backward, up, down, left, right. Oh, okay. So this is user focus. Yeah. Got it. That is actually surprisingly hard to do, especially the directional ones. <laughs> like we have defined sequential focus pretty well, mm, right? Okay. Here's how sequential focus works. You tab or shift tab, you move through the, the thing. Okay. But uh, the D-pad ones is much, much harder. Yeah, I would imagine that that's like many accessibility things. That's one of those things that seems like really clear that it's needed. And then when you think about all of the different interaction modes that there might be, that's when, yeah, you realize, oh, this is way harder than I thought it was because you got the D-pad and the sequential and the eye tracking and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You know, how do you manage it in a voice directed interface? That sort of thing. So there were all kinds of things in that specification is the point that yeah. um, we got approximately zero. Of. Yeah. We, you know, we, I mean, we got article main aside and yeah. I think of everything else you mentioned, we didn't get anything like direct. We didn't get exactly what they wrote down. Like, like you said, their pieces of these have been addressed in, in other ways, like uh, Fugu handling that connection object and stuff like that, but no, no direct implementation of this stuff. It's interesting to, to think back, like what a major leap all of those would have been like they would, most of those would be a pretty huge leap today, to be honest. Um, but at the time, like the state of the art in browsers was like get elements by class name. Yeah. And, and that returned like a, a node list, which was much less array like than it, like it, it was a very strange, cumbersome API at the time. And we did get, since then, we dealt with that. You know, we got query selector, query selector, all matches. None of those were in the, in that spec, but, mm. um, and we've got made them increasingly array like and made it super easy to put them in array because there's all these great array methods and things that you do with arrays to like filter them and yeah. remap them. We also improved the um like a lot of the just simple DOM APIs. And the state of the art for communicating asynchronously uh was still XMH XML HTTP request. Right. Which and in fact that had a synchronous mode. <laughs> A lot of the stuff we were talking about, the the data grids and trees and communications felt like sort of ways to do cooler XML HTTP requests. Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, uh, you know, one of those things where we got this new primitive concept, this new fundamental mm -hmm. thing in the platform, mm -hmm. and people were like, imagine all that I could do. And they, they started imagining really a lot, right? And it was pretty terrible as an interface. It, it sort of yeah. like, it was born from Java, um, I think. Yeah. Also, it was strange because like, even though it had this 
like you could make it asynchronous, which a lot of people didn't um, until later on because that makes it more complicated, especially because there also were no asynchronous primitives in the platform. There were no promises, definitely no async await. There was no fetch. There was no streams, you know, like, so yeah, I mean, that would have been a huge, huge leap to get any of those things. Um, yeah. And, and we got a lot of lower level stuff instead of that. Um, we got also template and slot, which are both huge, huge things, you know, like, um, comparatively an H card is like almost nothing. Yeah. You, you mentioned the, like, why don't we get those? Is it just because the, those are ridiculously complicated? Right. It, this even was discussed in 2004, even at that meeting and cited in the taking up of HTML that, you know, we're just bumping up against the edge of maybe with those elements like tab box being specifically about this, like there's a bunch of sections and you just happen to be able to sort that display them as tabs. Like Hixie said, tabs are a matter of overflow, right? Like they're, they're just like scroll bars in, in the web. Huh. He, he was saying that, um, yeah, it it seems like we n n like we're not ready to pick up all these like super complicated things. All of the people in 2004 wanted to do like really advanced stuff. Like they wanted a super rich toolbox that ran on a virtual machine and all this stuff and yeah. He has this quote that I thought I wrote down. This is uh I was quite amused to see that of all companies, Microsoft, Red Hat, and Sun Microsystems actually all agreed on something. <laughs> Namely, that trying to standardize an API for sophisticated applications is simply a non-starter. The argument, which I agree with, is that such an API is insanely complicated. Just that's like literally what you said, right? Yeah. And that making interoperable implementations is nigh on impossible. The detailed spec is the really big issue. There simply has never been a web specification written in enough detail for this kind of work. And yeah. if you're going to start doing that really detailed stuff, you probably don't start there, right? Yeah, probably not. And yeah, what people either may not have experienced or, or may have forgotten over the years is that at, at the time, 2004, the state of the art in web specifications, web technology specifications was generally here is thing. Here is what thing is meant to do. We leave it to implementers to figure out how to make that happen. Right. The CSS specification in particular was kind of notorious for not like intentionally not giving all of the details on how a thing should be rendered. They, they would say, you know, something to the effect of, you know, implementers, uh, you know, implementations may vary. And that was regarded as a good thing at the time because the specification authors were coming from a place of this capability should exist, but we do not pretend to know the best way to do that. Right. So, uh, the one that comes to mind is um, if you say something like font style oblique and there's no oblique face for that font, then you're supposed to like computationally slant it. The browser is, you know, at least invited to do that, but the like exact process is not defined, which was basically the spec author saying, you know, implementers might find different ways to do this. And then if one of them is obviously the best one, then we could write that down later. And, you know, what that led to, as we saw over the years, was just not quite interoperable implementations because this stuff wasn't written down. There were no detailed algorithms for how to lay out an element or how to deal with parsing weirdness in the HTML or whatever. And that there's been a big shift in the last 20 years towards specifications having ever, like if you look at the HTML specification now, 
most of it is, <laughs> from what I can tell, is detailed step-by-step -step algorithms for how to deal with, you know, this situation and this situation and this situation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so like I said, that you don't start that at the, you know, the top end of the most complex right. interactive widgets and all the things that could could be wrong that need to be specified. Yeah. You have to start somewhere much lower. And so they actually start at like the HTML parser because mm -hmm. um believe it or not, like that was the source of just a million bugs. Yeah. We introduced in ninety eight, I believe, the the DOM, like the actual level one DOM. Yep. It was right around then. And by this point in 2004, browsers didn't all even agree that the DOM was tree shaped. <laughs> yeah. Like with a tree, you have like, it would be impossible for something to circle back on itself. Right. But I right. think in Internet Explorer, you could create graphs like that where you could circle yeah. back. So I'm my own grandpa. So yeah, an, exactly. An old novelty song for those who don't recognize that. Or a reference back to Back to the Future. Oh, uh, yeah. Also Back to the Future. Although, fortunately, he did not become his own grandpa. That's true. Yeah, so I, I do think that that is super interesting. And we had to do a lot of, like, low-level work on the parser and learning how to really tightly specify things and getting really good interoperability by, you know, creating web platform tests because they didn't exist before that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I do think we got a lot of stuff and that I also wish that it had been sooner. Really need to write a blog post about, like, why I got into all this. But, like, I was I was writing, like, rich internet applications that used a lot of that stuff that we wanted at the time. I, I kept using the web because it was the, the tool we had, but I was very much looking forward to that other future. So, um, you know, I... I get why we had to go the way we've gone and it has been at times very slow and painful. It, I'm glad that we're really making a lot of progress now. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not sure it could have gone another way. Yeah, we may have had to, yeah, as, as a field, we may have had to do things the wrong ways in order to figure out better ways to do them. Absolutely. That is sort of like the, the, um, lesson takeaway from the future is next or what comes next is the future. That, yeah. Uh, film. Mm -hmm. You um, were in that film. I was, it's true. Yeah. That's uh, how, that's... how I now have uh, both a Wikipedia and an internet movie database. Nice. Entry. Uh, just like my best friend from high school, actually. And we're probably the only two people who ever graduated from our high school who has both. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Do are, do you want to say like what they're famous for? Or? Uh, yeah. So my best uh, friend, um, he's still a very good friend. My, my best friend in high school is uh, David Johnson, now known as David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick. He wrote the screenplay to Aquaman and its sequel, oh, nice. as well as uh, Orphan, a uh, couple of Conjuring movies, uh, some episodes of The Walking Dead. Um. He's produced a couple of indie films, that sort of thing. So yeah, he has a much larger internet movie database page than I do because right. um, he's done a lot more in Hollywood. Uh, but um, then he also has a Wikipedia page. And... That's kind of cool. Yeah. Congratulations to your friend if he ever manages to listen to our show. Yes, well. I, I doubt it. It doesn't seem like they are like overlapping careers, but. Eh, we talked uh, about, you know, Chad GPT and AIs recently, but. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. They're not, they're not hugely overlapping, but yeah. yeah, it's just, it's kind of weird, but also kind of cool that like, <laughs> it's just the, the paths that he and I took, we uh, ended up. Doing yeah. That. Anyway, it's moving on. Really unique set of boxes to take yeah. next to one. Seriously. Another. Yeah. I mean, I think we cover a lot of the, the stuff. I, I did find one like historical note that I thought was like maybe worth including. So one of the things that comes with pouring the detail into specifications is mm. that they get much longer, right? Yeah, they sure do. And he 
made a comment, Hixie made a comment on the mailing list. I'm going to quote, Another point that was mentioned at the workshop was that the DOM 3 core was a long specification, checking in at some 216 pages. Mm. HTML is 1,523 pages. <laughs> so That's even longer than the book I wrote. <laughs> yes, that is quite a long yeah. specification. And it's not going to get shorter. It's only going to get longer. Yep. So... Yeah, that was 1,500 pages. And like like I said, a lot of that is real detailed step-by-step -step algorithms. Yeah. Yeah. This There's a separate edition of HTML called the HTML edition for developers. Yeah. And it, it's like more the kind of stuff that we should read. Currently, it's, you know, like the level of detail that goes in the spec is really for implementers, not for... Right for developers. So there's a version oh. without all the wacky algorithms. Yeah. Well, they're not wacky. They're just insanely detailed. So I wish they have to be. I yeah. wonder I wonder how long that version of the HTML spec is with once you take all the algorithms out. That is a really good question. Huh. That's That's a thing to look up. That is a thing to look up. Let's do it. It is 5 pages. That can't be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would have been hilarious if it were correct. I guess there is no single page edition of this. Mm. Oh, that's unfortunate. Cool. I don't really have anything to add beyond this, really, other than, like, I just, I love looking at these old lists. I've looked at them for, I turn back to them all the time myself, you know, like, l look at these history things because something comes up and I'm like, boy, I think I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah. And sure enough. <laughs> right. Uh, I just thought it would be really interesting to talk about in the context of, you know, what are the things that we have been desiring for a long time? Because those are the the really satisfying wins, right? Like when we yeah. get has, you know, it's like, wow, we've been asking for that since 1998. Yeah, you thereabouts. Know, like that, <laughs> uh, that's a long time. So, yeah, uh, feels good to get it done. Yeah. I mean, the interesting thing is that when you look back at this sort of thing, and like you say, you can see the stuff we don't have yet, even though it feels like we we have everything we could have ever asked for. We actually don't. There are a bunch of things. And what's what's interesting to me here is that the expected path of the web in 2004 is both not alike and like the path that the web actually took over the next 19 years. Like there was this expectation that it would be really important to have a calendar element, right? And that hasn't really panned out necessarily, even with all of the calendaring <laughs> solutions mm -hmm. that there are, that hasn't really, that hasn't come to, risen to the point of one of the browser engine makers saying, this is a priority and it needs to be done. Right. They haven't gone to the browser team, their browser team and said, make this happen. And, uh, you know, things like accordions and tabs and, and that sort of thing is being worked on. Uh, didn't quite get there, um, yet. And some of the same ideas are, are coming up and other ideas are realized, you know, have over the 19 years, it's been realized that, okay, that seemed like a good idea in 2004 turns out that it's not because of these reasons. But um, yeah, to sort of to, to compare, to compare what, you know, what, what was being expected with what actually happened is a little interesting. And of course we, you, you know, you can play the game of, well, if we had actually gotten those things in 2004, maybe the web would look very different now and be more whatever. And yeah, maybe that's true. And maybe it's not. Um, but I think, I feel like the big thing that was expected then that we don't have yet is all of the native like event and data transfer. And I guess the interesting question is, much like calendar, like how important is that really? How common is it to want to be able to do that kind of live updating and event monitoring yeah i mean i don't know i think the bigger thing 
that we haven't gotten is like the sort of like template stamping kind of thing. Mm. Um, and that hasn't gone away. I mean, the, all the thing about, you know, React and all the React, Angular, Ember, Lit, you know, all, yeah. all of them. Right. Like they all are kind of addressing this, this, you know, very common need that, you know, HTML is really nice because it's like, um, it's a serialization at the end of the day, but then there's like the HTML specification that tells you about like, what does that mean in terms of like, how is it supposed to work? And, and like, are there interactions with the network CSS security, right? Like, but at the end of the day, like HTML is also, uh, there's a, the name for the serialization, right? It's like the name for, yeah. here's a big string that describes all that stuff. Right. Yeah. And boy, that's just really handy. I mean, there's just no, there's just no way around that. Like if you can munch strings together, you can make HTML and boy, are we good at making strings, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, and, and so there is this desire to like, do that and to be able like, okay, well, I, I know that whether it gets pushed to me or whether I go check on it every once in a while that like, sometimes like I, I have to trade data and I don't trade HTML. And I also, I don't just trade form data. Like I trade JSON back and forth, yeah. you know, and then I got to update my UI somehow. And how do I do that? And that's what, what all those things are trying to do. And like, HTML, not the serialization, but the, you know, the whole specification, like it, it doesn't have a way to do that currently. And there, there is work on that between people at Google and people at Apple. It's been going on for like kind of a long time, but it's really making a lot of progress. I'm hoping that we see something there. It will probably mostly at first just make those libraries better and not make something <laughs> like particularly natively right. better for the average Joe. Okay. Yeah. But I am hopeful that we can, that we can get there. Yeah. Templating would be pretty cool. I still use server side includes. It'd be nice to have something a little more robust dynamic. Yeah. It's, that's a fascinating one. Like everybody wants that, right? Like just a, basically like some kind of like client side include. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, that, it seems like so obvious, right? <laughs> I mean, among the very mm. first things that we did with the web is create frame sets. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because we're like, well, I'm not going to rewrite that every time I want to create a new page. That's just madness. Right. Like yeah. why I don't want to put the sidebar on every single page. Wow. Why would I do that? Right. And I mean, yeah, it's really obvious. Why would you do that? Um, you could say it's over there. Just it's the same one. Yep. It's just on every page. Go grab that. Yeah, and you and you can't do that. Like they, there have been lots of proposals to do that, and there's like a lot of hesitancy to do it. For one, because it would really affect performance, right? Like you have to like leave just just like there is for, you know, we have the import in CSS, you know. And people say, yeah, don't, don't use that. Cause every import that you use means that you have to stop where you are and go do a network fetch. And like, you don't know how long that's going to take. Right. Yeah. Just use links in the page itself and do them all like pre, <laughs> like pre fetch these things, like make it as eager as you possibly can get out of the way because those are the rules you need to render the page in the first place, you know, for all the same reasons, I think they're hesitant to add effectively a uh, client side include fair enough yeah but all right hey this was like a really fun discussion yep. um, history is always a good time yeah hopefully people found it interesting hopefully thanks for listening yeah thanks